Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to explore one of the most powerful features of Java, methods. Methods help us organize our code, make it reusable, and break down complex problems into manageable parts. So what is a method? Well, a method is a block of code that performs a specific task. In Java, methods are part of a class and are used to define the behaviors of objects. You've already encountered several you've already encountered several methods in our previous lessons. So is that the methods that you've seen? The main method. This is the entry point of any Java application. Constructors, these are special methods used to initialize objects. And there were methods from other classes, such as length and char at from a string class, uh, the next line, next int, uh, next double from the scanner class, uh, show input dialog, show message dialog from the JOptions pane class, um, print, print line, print f from the system.out object. So let's start looking at how to create methods in a Java class. Methods can have parameters and return values, which make them flexible and powerful. So let's take a look at the basic syntax of a method. Let's just create a simple method that will uh, print a message, just like hello world. So I have public class, my class, um, public static void, main, uh, string args, so, sorry, normal stuff there. Okay, but here I have public void print message system dot print line hello world. So this is a method known as print message. So in this example, public is an access modifier, meaning the method is accessible from other classes. Void means the method does not return a value. Print message is the method name. And the open close parentheses indicates that the method has no parameters. So in the main method, I'm going to call print message and let's see what happens. Now let's uh, create a method with parameters. Parameters allow us to pass information into a method. So uh, in here, see it, this takes a string message and what it's gonna do is it's gonna print out the message. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in order to do this, I must give it a return type. We had void before, meaning it didn't return anything. This time, this is uh, actually not going to return anything. So this is still going to be a void. Okay. 
So this takes in a parameter. <clears throat> um, it takes in a parameter of a message, so the string, and then it will print out that message. So in this case, we gave it the string hello world, which was saved to the variable s, and we told it to print, uh, print message on s. So s goes in as a message here and gets printed out. Right. Let's create a method with a return value. So methods can also return values. So we have public, and since this is going to read, uh, we'll add numbers, we're going to use this to add two numbers together. We have int a and int b, so integer a, integer b, and it's going to return that value. So we have a plus b. Well, a and b are both integers. We add them together, we get an integer. So this is returning an integer type. So I'll make a call to uh, add numbers here. So we can take a look and see what happens. And I'll do three comma four. So we put it outside of the class. <laughs> Static. So when we do add numbers of three and four, it goes to add numbers. It takes three and four, adds them together, gets seven. It returns that value of seven. Great thing though with return is that we can also have this value get returned to a variable. Since this does return an integer, um, This is going to return a value and it's going to be saved to an integer because it's an integer variable. If I try to do this as a different thing, such as this, get an error because incompatible types. We tried to take a something that returned an integer and make it into a, a, a character. Okay. So it's very important that you match those up. All right. So what if you were to create a method in a, in a new class? So like we did with persons before with the constructor, but that was a special method. This time let's expand on our persons class by adding some methods to it. So let's do a method to get the name. We'll call it, and it will return the string value of the name. So um, let's do a method to set the name. So we'll call this uh, set name. We're just gonna take a name and set it to the value of what name is for that object. So the same thing for, uh, to get the age. And let's do one to set the age. 
Uh, and then let's have one that's going to print details about the person, such as uh, their name and age. Okay. So we have four methods that we're adding here. One's get name, which allows us to get the value of their name. Another is the set name that allows us to change the value of their name. Um, another to get the age, which allows us to access and get that value of the age. And another uh, to set the age, which will allow us to mutate or change the value of the age. And another one kind of allows us to print out all the details of everything. So kind of a way to make it go to a string um, if we wanted to print out this object. Um, I chose these specifically because these are very special. So get name and set. Uh, so in this example, we created several methods in the person class. So get name and set name, which takes a string name, uh, allows us for accessing and modifying the name. Get age and set name, which would take an integer age, allows us for accessing and modifying the age. And print details for printing details of the person. This getting and setting is uh, or accessing and mutating. Our methods that are quite often created and used for classes for those exact purposes, to be able to access things in it and to be able to get, uh, and to be able to mutate or change uh, values. We'll talk more about that um, in the future. And the idea of doing this print details um, actually is a great way to uh, similarly be able to modify and change um, this object to have a string representation. But again, we'll see more of that in the future. So, if we wanted to, we could combine. So we could let's combine what we learn about user inputs and methods. We'll modify our person class to include a method that updates the users, uh, the updates the person's details based on user input. Okay. Let's make these values have limited uh, access. Great reason to have the getters and setters. So let's make it private instead of where they are right now. It's public. Okay. create a method to update details by utilizing that uh, scanner to be able to um, get user input to define some of these things and combine the uses of the other methods we created. So in this, I'm going to, it's going to return nothing. It's just going to make the changes within it. So um, let's make sure we create a new scanner object. Um, let's call this input because we're getting input from the user. Make sure you use that do keyword and this scanner uh, constructor. We're going to tell it to system dot in so we get user inputs. Now, so that out dot print line. So we're getting something from the user. I'll just use print. So anyway, um, enter word name.
So we'll um, take that what's entered in to input. Once we press enter, that new line character, so we'll get all of that and we'll put it into new name. Since we have their new name, we can now set their new name. So we'll do just that. We'll set um, the new name using that set name method that we created before with the new name. It takes the new name and it will change this dot name, so the object's name, to be whatever that name is. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Um, all right. And let's do the same thing with the age. So, each is an integer. So let's, uh, let's first ask for it. So, let's enter. So, let's there. So, Age. It's new age. It's next. It's and don't forget to clear the buffer. Uh, the keyboard buffer. Buffer. Input. Uh, next line. Set the age. U H. Everyone know that we have updated tickles. Party points or something. Yeah, and then. Okay, close this camera and check out. All right, so let's actually test to make sure this, these things are working, right? So um, in my 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 main class, <laughs> um, in my class here up here, so what we'll do is we will actually, so this is main, so it actually happens. Um, let's create a person. So person, let's call it person one. See, we had Alice and Bob before, so let's do that again. We got Alice in here. So I'm going to person. Alice was 30. So using that person constructor to create um, the person one object, which will have the contents of name Alice and age, or sorry, have attributes of name Alice and age 30. Um, just so that you can see that, let's do uh, print details. one so use that object this dot method so they use the method for that object which is print details and print details is, is void so this returns nothing and it takes no parameters here so we can just do just this that will print out their name and age alice in 30 a name name colon alice in age colon 30 and let's update their information shall we so we'll do person and update. Okay. And once we're done with that, we shall print out their information to show that it's there. All right, now let's make this be interactive so that we can do just that. I never fixed that there earlier. All right, so as we can see with person uh, one, we print their details, Alice at 30. We do get a name, Alice, comma, age, comma, colon, 30. So we're gonna enter a new name. So let's do Irma. And Irma is going to be 65. So uh, details update. So I'm glad I actually made that mistake so that you can clearly see here. 
that when you do type things in, it literally saying everything that's typed in. Okay, so be very careful of that. It's a common mistake that many people uh, make with their code. So as you can see though, it said details updated, which happens in print, uh, which happens, sorry, in update details right here. And then we told it to print out our details again. So we can see the changes and we see them here, new name, new age. All right, awesome. And there you have it. We've learned how to create methods, pass parameters, and return values. We've also seen how methods fit into the broader picture of OOP by organizing code into reusable, manageable pieces. By using methods, you can make your Java programs more modular and easy to maintain. Next, we'll explore more advanced concepts. But for now, practice creating and using methods in your classes. Happy coding. Ah, oh, man, this just gets better and better. Bon appetit.